Thank you all for coming to show your support for Shiwei Wang, his wife Hua, and their son Xiao Fan. My name is Jane Manners, and I, like Wang, am a graduate student in Princeton's history department. Many of us gathered here know Wang as a colleague, a scholar, a friend, and a father. We are here tonight to urge our representatives in Washington to do all they can to bring Wang home to us and to his family. As many of you know, Wang is both a loving husband and father and a brilliant and passionate scholar. In the spring of 2016, he traveled to Iran to do dissertation research. In August, he was arrested on false espionage charges. And he has remained in prison since that time, nearly two whole years. I don't need to tell you that he is suffering tremendously, as is his family. Since Wang's arrest, Hua Chu, Wang's wife, has worked without stopping to free her husband. Hua has been a tireless and effective advocate, all while working full-time and being a single parent to five-year-old Xiao Fan. Those of us who know Hua have been awed by her strength, her intelligence, and her endurance. Tonight, we will hear from Wang's friends and colleagues, as well as representatives of our larger Princeton community. Each will speak briefly, urging Wang's safe return. Hua will speak last. We ask that you hold your applause. Our first speaker will be Sarah Jane Leslie, the Dean of Princeton's Graduate School. Thank you, Jane. And on behalf of Princeton University and all of us at the Graduate School, thank you so much to everyone here for coming out this evening to show your support for Wong and his family. We are grateful that tonight's gathering has brought together not only Wong's friends and colleagues who know him well, but also so many others who are moved by his unjust and unjustifiable captivity. Students, faculty, university staff, residents of the town of Princeton, and many others who are standing here in solidarity with him. We are very grateful that Mayor Lempert has joined us, as well as representatives from our state and federal government. We also greatly appreciate the messages of support that we've received via social media and other means from those who can't be present with us tonight, but who are with us nonetheless in spirit. Two years have passed since Wang left campus to resume his scholarly work in Iran. We miss him, we care for him, and we want him to come home. In the summer of 2016, Wang was in Iran doing language study and other scholarly work for his dissertation in history. He was just doing his research, like any other student, like any one of us here. Yet as he was readying to come home to his wife Hua and their young son, Wang was suddenly and unexpectedly arrested. What follows has been heartbreaking. The charges against him, espionage, are completely false. And yet an Iranian court found him guilty and sentenced him to 10 years in prison. Last summer, an appeals court upheld that conviction and Wang remains to this day in Evan prison. Since Wang was taken, a team of university officials and others have been working day by day on his behalf, and we continue to work day by day to secure his release and to support his family, and this work will not cease until he is home. We know that there are many hurdles to overcome, but we persevere in hopeful and faithful anticipation of the day that he will rejoin us here at Princeton and be reunited with his family. Hua, please know that the university cares deeply for Wang, for you, and for Xiao Fan. You have shown unbelievable courage, loving devotion, and unflagging determination in all your efforts to free your husband. You are an inspiration and an example to us all, and I am personally, I stand in awe of you, Hua. Um, and I think all of us here, we stand with you every hour of every day. We hope that the support and commitment displayed here will help sustain you and remind you of the commitment that we all share to bring Wong home. Next, we'll hear from Dong Xian Xiang, a graduate student in political science and a close friend of Wong's.
Thank you all for coming. It is widely known that many universities in the world are at risk and academic freedom is under threat, either by populist movements or by governmental censorship. We are deeply concerned with our freedom and the freedom of our colleagues. We are debating about the best strategies to defend our invaluable independence. But tonight, in this rally, we would like to remind you, re remind the Princeton community, that a graduate student has been suffering both physically and mentally under a notoriously arbitrary regime after he did some archival work in the country which had nothing to do with his contemporary politics. He is one of us, a dedicated scholar, a loving husband, a caring father. He is Xi Yue Wang, a PhD student in history at Princeton University. I started to know Xi Yue shortly before he was arrested in Iran in April 2016, when he returned to Princeton after the first session of his study in Iran, I was invited by a friend to an informal lunch with him and was quickly impressed by his erudition, enthusiasm, and keen intelligence. I have long been admiring historians, and Xi Yue fits my conception of an ideal historian pretty well. Afterwards, we went to the H Mart in Edison together, and he bought a bottle of Korean honey tea for his son, Shao Fan. See you in fall, and I will invite you and your wife to visit my family after I finish my study in Iran, said Xi Yue, before we said goodbye to each other. Several months later, I heard the shocking news that he was unjustly confined by the Iranian authority one day before his scheduled return. In the past few months, Xi Yue has been allowed to make regular phone calls from the prison, so I get the opportunity to reconnect with him and talk to him almost every other day, averagely for 50 minutes each time. In prison, Xi Yue keeps exchanging ideas with his friends in order to maintain his intellectual capacity and uh, mental health. He's very eager to learn, uh, to teach. So he offers me a free undergraduate level course, Iran 101. He is also eager to learn, so I also offer him a free undergraduate level course, Introduction to Political Theory. Working in different fields does not prevent us from discussing scholarly issues all around the world, ranging from Islamic law to Habsburg Empire to contemporary Chinese politics. But the most touching moments are when I told Xi Yue that I had to go to academic conferences for several days and may not be able to answer your calls. At these moments, I can feel his yearning from the depths of his heart to return to our beautiful campus, to write articles based on his new findings, to attend conferences and meetings, and to reconnect with the academic world. Doing research is a painful process, said Xi Yue. But if a scholar is deprived of this very privilege, he does not even know how to live. The US has long been regarded and always regards itself as the torch of freedom and human rights, and Princeton University as the bulwark of academic freedom. Eulogy is not for eulogy's sake, but it's meant to be a reminder of their ideals, duties, and obligations. We, as serious close friends, appeal to broader Princeton community, students, faculty, staff, alumni, as well as all concerned US citizens. To, for humanitarian support for Xi Yue. We urge you to show Princetonian solidarity in order to safeguard academic freedom and prevent any other American students and researchers from suffering what Xi Yue and his family have been enduring in the last 21 months since his incarceration. We urge Princeton's Board of Trustees, the President of the United States, the Congress and the Senate to take all necessary actions for the immediate release of Xi Yue. 
and bring him home to his beloved family and academic work. May freedom return to Xi Yue, and may peace and happiness return to his family. Thank you. We'll now hear from Sarah Carson, a graduate student in history and a good friend of Wang's. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored that Hua asked me to speak here today. I am in Wang Xiwei's cohort in the Department of History, and Xiwei was in many of my classes during my first two years here at Princeton. He has been a generous fellow classmate and a very thoughtful friend. And in deciding what to say today, I thought I might take some cues from him uh, from a conversation I was able to have with him about a month ago. Um, he wanted me to know three things in particular. First, he made me aware that the conditions in the prison are, are very difficult and tedious and dangerous to his psychological and physical health. And I and everyone here are very, very worried about him. Um, second, he told me that he had not been fully aware that his research in Iran might lead to this distr distressing situation. As historians, our work takes us all over the world and many of us take leaps of faith during that process. Um, and one of the thoughts that went through my mind the day that I learned of his imprisonment was, could this have been me? And I suspect that many of us might have had that same thought, uh, especially those of us who work in places outside of the US and, and Europe. Um, like many of us, Shiwei does not think of Iran as an enemy. He has long been fascinated by this part of the, of the world. He studied its culture and languages, and his research would provide new information about the region's rich and, and complex history. And while I don't work on a topic that's relevant to sensitive contemporary issues, neither does Wang Shiwei. His research was on a 19th century Eurasian empire that collapsed in, in 1925, more than 50 years before the establishment of the Islamic Republic in Iran. Um, and when I did my research, I went through the proper channels, but so did Wang Shiwei. He got those same government permissions that I did. He worked through scholarly organizations and universities to conduct his research. Everything he did was public and appropriate for our profession. And the last thing he wanted me to know is that he hopes we're remembering him here and especially supporting his family. Um, and because he has been in prison for nearly two years at this point, some members of this community may not have had the privilege of knowing him, so I want to offer a memory or two of our time as students together. Uh, Wei made my first years here happier. You might not all be aware, but academia can sometimes be a stressful environment, and Wang and I bonded over not loving the more competitive aspects of academic life or public speaking. But we both le love to learn, and we're trying to learn as much about as much of the world as possible. And he was better at it than me because of his many diverse experiences and his very omnivorous interests. I was blown away by his talent with languages and his genuine curiosity. Um, and he gave up a lot to do this work. Throughout our first year here, he would show us photos and videos of his new baby, Xiaofan, who was with Hua back in China. And when he showed us, Xi Wei would have this happy and sort of bemused expression on his face. Like, wow, I cannot believe this is my baby. And um, it made us realize he was sacrificing a lot to pursue this dream to do important work and scholarship as a historian. When his family was able to come join him, he invited a few of us to his house for the Chinese New Year. Uh, he wanted to share this holiday with us and explain what it meant to him and, uh, and his family. And he wanted to cook for us, which is one of his favorite hobbies. And I hear he is cooking for some of his fellow prisoners now. Uh, I saw him frequently at the time, so it really amused me that when he sent us an invitation, it was very formal. Um, and on that uh, evening, I met Hua and his son for the first time and ate delicious food and uh, the whole evening was very sweet and thoughtful and really made me feel at home here. Um, Wang Xiwei was an important part of my home here in the first couple of years. Soon afterwards, we both left to do our research and I was looking forward to catching up with him when we returned from the field. And I'm still looking forward to that. Uh, Xiwei is a good and kind and gentle person and it breaks my heart to know that he has to endure this harrowing and damaging imprisonment. So like all of his colleagues here, I, I 
urge and hope that the U.S. State Department and President Trump, members of Congress and uh, interested citizens of the United States are renewing their efforts right now to get him home soon. And uh, my heart uh, goes out to his, his family who's had to endure so much. Thank you. Our next several speakers do not know Wang personally. They are here because Wang's story reaches beyond the university gates. Hua lives and works in the Princeton area. Xiaofan will be attending kindergarten in the Princeton Public Schools this fall. Wang's well-being matters to this broader community. And so we're grateful that Liz Lempert, the mayor of Princeton, could join us to say a few words. Mayor Lempert will also be reading a statement on behalf of New Jersey Assemblyman Andrew Zwicker, who was unable to join us today. As Mayor of Princeton and, and on behalf of the wider Princeton community, we stand in solidarity with Wong's family, friends, and colleagues. This is a horrible, unjust, unspeakable ordeal, and it violates everything our community holds dear. As a community, we completely stand with you, we support you, and we are here for you during this dark and difficult time. And we join with you in doing everything we can to bring Wong back home soon and safely. I'd also like to share this message from Assemblyman Andrews Wicker. As a Princeton University community member and state legislator representing Princeton, I regret that I could not be with you all tonight to show my support for Wong, his family, his friends, and colleagues. The principles that bring us together tonight and to this institution are the rights to intellectual freedom, the freedom to conduct research, pursue knowledge, and express ideas without political interference and without fear of governmental retribution. These principles are fundamental to and cherished by our community and all its members, by this university, and by any advocate for a free and fair democracy. This is not a Republican or Democratic set of principles. While Americans hold these principles especially high in our hierarchy of values, and America has been a shining example of the pursuit and protection of these principles, they are not even solely American. These principles reflect universal and humanistic ideals. The importance and tenuousness of these principles in our complex world are vividly and devastatingly demonstrated by Mr. Wong's situation and his imprisonment. That is why you are all here and why we come together to support his family and his cause. Please know that I will continue to work with our congressional delegation, our local leaders, and each of you to do everything we can to bring Wong home. New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez is the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Jeremy Julis, Deputy Director of Constituent Services for Senator Menendez, will read a statement from the Senator. Dear Hua, I regret my schedule doesn't allow me to attend the May 11th rally you are organizing in support of Shi Wei Wang but I wanted to make sure that you know that I will always stand by your side demanding your husband's immediate release. My staff and I will never stop fighting for Xi Wei until he is safely back in the United States where he belongs. Your words deeply moved me during our meeting on April 10th. It is a heartbreaking outrage that your husband has been away from you and your son for this long. It is a gross injustice that Iran arrested your husband and sentenced him to 10 years in prison for alleged espionage when he was a simply pursuing doctoral research. The United States cannot tolerate this blatant, politically motivated violations of basic human rights and freedoms. I will continue to press the State Department and the White House to do more to negotiate Wong's release. As you know, in October 2017, the Senate unanimously passed S. Resolution 245, a bill I co-sponsored, calling on the government of Iran to immediately release unjustly detained U.S. citizens, illegal permanent resident aliens, including your husband, Wang. Sadly, your husband is one of several U.S. citizens and legal permanent residents Iran has unjustly detained. 
Sia McNamazi, a former student of Rutgers University in New, in New Jersey, also remains in prison in Iran, along with his father, a former UNICEF employee. Former FBI agent Robert Levinson has been missing in Iran for more than a decade, and his family continues to mourn his absence, including one of his sons that works in my office. As I've, as I've said many times, if Iran aspires to be accepted as a responsible member of the community of nations, it must stop hate taking hostages and respect human rights. I am humbled by your courage to continue to speak out in the face of this injustice, and while I'm not here in person, rest assured that I stand with you on this day and every day until the safe return of Wong to, to his home in New Jersey. It's now my pleasure to introduce United States Representative Chris Smith from New Jersey's 4th District. Representative Smith currently serves as a senior member on the House Committee on Foreign Affairs and as chairman of the Subcommittee on Global Human Rights. Thank you, Representative Smith, for joining us. I had prepared some longer remarks, but due to the eloquence of the previous speakers, uh, I'll just be very brief. And I want to thank them for their love, their compassion, uh, their empathy uh, for Wang. His wife, uh, with whom I had a long meeting with as well, like Senator uh, Menendez. Uh, there can't be a greater ambassador, a woman who loves her husband more, uh, and carries with her the, the just the, the clout of saying, I'm speaking for a husband who has done absolutely nothing wrong, uh, and it is time for him to be freed. You know, I, in the early 1980s, I traveled to Perm Camp 35 in the Ural Mountains and met with a number of prisoners. Nathan Sharansky was one of the most famous prisoners of Perm 35. And I learned the lesson then that I bring to you, which many of you already know, is that one thing we can't do is lose hope. There have been prisoners all over the world, including in Evan Prison, uh, who some people said, oh, they'll never get out. How could that possibly happen? But when we make it a priority in our diplomacy, when we prudently and in a Solomon, Solomon-like fashion use sanctions in a way that's most likely to achieve a positive outcome, uh, we can see the release of prisoners who are being unjustly incarcerated. Wang did it by the book absolutely did it by the book. And all the pre-clearances from Iran before he went there, they welcomed him. The foreign ministry knew he was there doing research. There was nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, that was treasonous or was seeking to, to you know, do any kind of uh, CIA type work, which is what the allegations have been. Nothing. Your case, Wong's case, reminds me of some of the other cases we've had coming out of Iran. I'll never forget Pastor Abedini meeting with his wife, Magbe, who first went to the State Department, who said, this was several years ago, that there was nothing they could do. She did come to Congress, and in a bipartisan way, we rallied behind her and the other prisoners, and eventually uh, he got out. I believe that if we work in a bipartisan way, if we use the leverage that we have, and it is considerable, uh, we can effectuate the release of Wong and the other Americans who are being held. I think we need to get our Europeans much more further involved. They have academics who travel to Iran as well. They are at risk as well. This is, as Wong's good friend and colleague spoke earlier, uh, this is an issue of academic freedom. Uh, I've asked uh, 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 Hua Chu if, if she would like to have a congressional hearing. I would share it. We would love to hear a wife tell the story, uh, as Magme did so eloquently on behalf, uh, behalf of her husband, uh, and then more people will take notice. And finally, I want to say how grateful I am that all of you are here too. I appreciate the invite, but all of us are here to rally behind a great man. Uh, we also want to say that it is a matter of when and not if that he will be released, and I, like you, look forward to the day where he will stand right here, right here, with a platform, uh, and say thank you to all of you for rallying on behalf of his cause. God bless you. Our last speaker of the evening will be Hua Chu, Wang's wife. As Hua speaks, volunteers will be passing out candles, which we ask that you keep lit as Hua talks. Thank you all for coming today to show your continued support and the friendship to Xi Yue. 
It has been two long years. Xi Yue, I, and our five-year-old son Xiao Fan have been enduring tremendous stress and suffering. But this week, we witness the three former hostages in North Korea returning to their homeland. I really hope that President Trump can achieve a similar breakthrough in my husband's situation. I sincerely hope that he can achieve my husband's release swiftly. I would like to address the following letter of appeal to Mr. President Trump. Dear President Trump, thank you for reminding the free world that Iran must stop its unjust imprisonment of foreigners, including American citizens. I'm writing to you as a wife and a young mother. My husband, Xu Wang, is an American citizen and a graduate student of Princeton University. Held since August 2016 in very harsh conditions in Iran's Evan prison, Xu wants to come home and we need your help and that of the United States government. Please, Mr. President, will you please meet with me and hear our story to show your support to these American citizen. My husband is an innocent man, Mr. President. He has been imprisoned solely because he is American. He's being used as a hostage and pawn by Iranian hotliners in their negotiations with the United States. Xi Yue is completely innocent of all the charges against him. He is a scholar interested in the languages, histories, and civilizations of Eurasia, and he has been fearless and dedicated in pursuit of his knowledge and his desire to build connections across borders. Before he was arrested, Xi Yue was studying Farsi and conducting archival research on the Qajar dynasty of the 19th century Iran for his doctoral dissertation. His topic is a comparative analysis of governance practice, practices in Central Asia in the late 19th century and early 20th century. He has been attempting to read historical documents kept in the National Archives of Iran. He had obtained permission for the relevant Iranian authorities who were also aware of his research plans even before he traveled to Iran. The documents he needed to read were not classified. Iran's Ministry of Foreign Affairs even wrote him a letter of introduction. My husband is a good man, Mr. President. He is a proud American, a dedicated student, a devoted husband, a caring father to our five-year-old son, Xiao Fan. I miss him terribly. As time goes by, I fear more and more for his safety. Xi Yue is being held in the notorious Evan prison in an area that is mostly underground, cold, and dark, overcrowded, and infested by bed bugs. As an American and a non-Muslim, Xi Yue has been subjected to abuse and harsh interrogations by the Iranian authorities. He is in constant pain from health problems caused by these conditions. He is losing hope. Meanwhile, it is harder and harder for our son to remember his father, and it's hard for him to grow up with, with a mother that is always sad and worried. Please bring Xi Yue home and make our family whole again. Struggling to raise Xiao Fan by myself, I feel very alone with my husband far away in Iran. I'm doing all I can for his release, but no, months passed and nothing happened and nothing I do is enough. I'm very grateful for the help that Xi Yue and I have received from Princeton University and the State Department. 
But, Mr. President, without your help, I'm afraid that nothing will happen. You are a skilled negotiator that brought North Korea to the bargaining table that uh, other presidents and conventional diplomats have failed. Sir, I hope that you will carry on this good work to bring this innocent American home, um, this innocent American scholar that is being held by the Iranian regime to bring him home as well. Only you can bring him home. Please, Mr. President, you are our hope and we are counting on you. I would like to thank you once again for all your solidarity at this moment. I especially would like to thank all the organizers and volunteers for their hard work. They have been working tirelessly day and night in the past few weeks to make this event happen. That is important for Xi Yue to keep his spirit high. Um, at the end, I would like to say that back in 2016, um, Xi Yue should have come home to spend the summer with us, but the outbreak, the outbreak of this crisis have, has turned our, uh, our lives upside down. And in the summer of 2017, after a year um, that the case has been kept in private, um, all that I hope is that all of these can be resolved quietly and my husband can home, come home and spend the summer with us. And now, and in the summer of 2018, I sincerely hope that I can see him in this coming summer. Thank you all. That's our last and most powerful speaker. Thank you, Hua. Thank you all for coming, for showing your solidarity, as Hua said, with Hua and with Xiaofan. If you uh, are interested in doing more, please make sure to contact your representatives in Congress, to contact President Trump, to be forceful in advocacy for Xi Wei Huang's release. We do have a Twitter hashtag that you can follow. Please be vocal in your support of Shiwei Wang. Thank you.